Hi guys, I'm Carolina. Welcome to my channel. I'm a relatively small YouTuber. As you know, if you look down on my number of subscribers, I have like between three and a half thousand and four thousand subscribers. So I'm quite small. And that means that YouTube doesn't recommend my videos very eagerly because my videos do not amass a huge number of views in the first place. I do not have a sufficiently large audience. You know, when you open a homepage, you have some recommendations or when you uh, search for a given term, um, you've got like search results and my video wouldn't be anywhere uh, on the top of that list because I'm quite small and I don't have many views under my videos. And the reason for that is, you know, if you're small, there is a chance, there is a risk that you're just bad and you don't have an audience because no one wants to watch your videos. And, you know, YouTube's goal is to capture your attention for as long as possible. So YouTube really wants to recommend you good videos so that you carry on watching. But, you know, this assumption that if you're small, that means you're bad, obviously it's broken. You might be a small YouTuber because you are a new YouTuber, right? And that has nothing to do with the quality of your content and how interesting you are or how entertaining you are. I'm not the one to judge whether my videos are good or bad, but even if they're good, you know, assuming they're good, they will not reach wide audiences just yet. Now the fun part. So one morning I just woke up. As usual, the first thing in the morning that I do is I pick up my phone and I look at the YouTube studio. You know, it shows you all the stats for your channel. It shows you all the comments, uh, you know, all the analytics, everything related to your videos. So I pick up my phone, I look at the app and I noticed two comments on the, the GPT-3 video. And that was a bit unusual because that wasn't my latest video or anything like that. And usually I get comments only under my latest videos or maybe some videos that are like most popular. For example, the, uh, you know, data, data engineering ones are quite popular. So I expect comments there or, you know, under the newest videos, but not necessarily some random video like GPT-3. So, I noticed two of them. So it was like, hmm, interesting. Two different people commenting under my GPT-3 video out of blue. So I went into the analytics page and I saw the source of that traffic and it said towards datascience.com. And I was like, hmm, interesting. That probably means that someone mentioned me there in the comments or maybe in the article. So I started Googling my name, um, Karolina Swinska towards datascience.com and what I found was a search result uh, leading to an article. I opened the article but it's behind the paywall so I'm like uh, yeah what else I'm gonna pay anyway so I paid for the membership to, towards data science just to read that article and yeah I was in. I started reading the article and the title was I can't quote it exactly now but it was something along the lines of I built my own YouTube recommendation algorithm to stop wasting time. And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. So what I quickly gathered was that someone was annoyed with how YouTube throws garbage at you, you know, on your homepage, you know, gives you all those recommendations and then it basically just sucks you in and it's very addictive. And also you're just like mindlessly watching videos that you don't even want to watch. So someone was really annoyed with that. So what he did was he built his own algorithm to recommend him videos based on his own search query. So basically he built his own search because he wanted to circumvent opening YouTube and seeing the homepage with the recommendations from YouTube. In order to build that algorithm, the author asked a very simple question. What makes a good YouTube video? And even though it is a simple question, there is no simple answer to that. But in that article, the guy was basically trying to capture the essence of what a good video is. In a nutshell, what he took into account was the views to subscribers ratio with a rationale that the number of views itself is not indicative enough of the quality of a video, but when you take into account the number of subscribers someone has and compare it to the number of views, then there is some indication of quality. And another metrics they since published with the rationale that older videos have a higher chance of getting more views, you know, accumulating more views over time. And that was 
an awesome idea. I mean, I really liked the whole project, the whole idea of it, you know, like trying to build your own recommendation engine so that you do not rely on YouTube's one and you are not being manipulated with the content that you're served. Have you guys watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix? It basically is about how we are being manipulated with the recommendations that we get. Well, basically it's crazy how the recommendations we get on social media or platforms like YouTube, how they shape our perspectives and what we believe to be true in the world. And you know what? We are actually pretty vulnerable if we just blindly consume what we are served. Having a recommendation engine on your homepage seems pretty innocent. What happens after some time? You're being surrounded with the content that you like and not being exposed to anything else, which basically makes you think that everyone else thinks the same and you're basically just shielded from different points of view, which is harmful, which also increases polarization in societies and leads to very bad things in the end. Anyway, I kept scrolling and then I saw my video embedded in that article and I was like, oh my God, is it an example of a bad video? But no, it turned out that the guy searched for the query GPT-3 and the algorithm recommended him that video and he liked it and he said, oh, that, that's an example of a good one, you know? So I was like, ooh, that's nice. Thank you very much, algorithm. And thank you, Chris. True honor. I'm linking the article in the description below. I'm super tempted to build something like this for myself because it looks like a really cool project and I am very inspired by the Social Dilemma documentary that you can watch on Netflix. And you know, the whole idea of just developing your, your perspectives and not being kind of, pigeonholed in, in one point of view, which social media makes you do almost. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. And as always, I will see you next Thursday. Bye.